welcome to Velo Fan Motorcycle Workshop episode one. This is the first episode. Uh, I haven't done any of these so far, so this one will be just me updating you on what I've done basically in the last few months to the bike, the restoration project. This uh, this bike, um, 1928 KNS, came into my life seven years ago, I think. Um, went to professional restorers, paint sprayers, um, they had it for three years. Yeah, anyway, I wasn't happy with the work that was done from the engineering point of view and so on and so forth. So anyway, since it's been back with me, um, obviously that's probably, yeah, four years, hasn't progressed that much, but anyway. So, um, what I've been doing. So the barrel that was on the bike when I got it, although the engine was a rebuilt engine, supposedly that's why the price was more for the bike. The barrel was not an original barrel. We think, from having looked at it with the other fellow owners, that it's custom made, homemade one, because these ones are cast and the one that I've removed is machined. So, potentially, but anyway, I want to go back to standard. So it had, like I say, probably a um, homemade barrel, potentially, or just from another bike. And the piston was a Mark II KSS piston. So I've now gone back to the original Hepolite piston correct for this bike, which is like, it's not got as much on it. So it won't have as high compression, um, but whatever, it's standard, so that's good. So yeah, so I had to take all of that off. And I wouldn't have started doing any of this without the help of a guy within the club who's I've never met. We've only talked on the phone and WhatsApp and stuff. Um, we don't live close enough to each other, but without his help, I wouldn't have been able to do what I've done. So that's fantastic, and that's part of why I'm doing these videos. The following episodes will be me actually working on the bike, but for this episode, we'll be just talking about it because I've done so much and not recorded, and I thought, well, let's just cover it. So anyway, so yeah, so I took all of that off. Um, Fit a new gasket under here, put the barrel on, piston on, um, sprayed these at the same time with the heat resistant spray. The head, I left the valves that were in there because I thought they were okay. I did buy new valves, but I didn't use them. Um, I replaced the springs, decided, you know, the, what was on there was probably fine, but replaced the springs. Um, Next on the issue was, so we were end, then into doing all the um, the meshing of the gears on the other side of this, but because this is an overhead cam engine, um, it's driven by bevel gears and that needed sorting out. So I had a huge gap on the vertical tube and the Oldham's couplings, I just they just weren't right. So got some new ones and honed them in to, to be a nice fit. So that's been done. I then had to adjust uh, the meshing of the gears, which was done by moving the position of my, my, yeah, my camshaft, I guess. I had to pack it to get it to go where I wanted it to go, and then I could reduce that to get the meshing. Well, it was like the teeth weren't meeting exactly the right place. So that was another job that had to be done. Um, then the rocker spindles, what was fitted to the bike, were non-originals. These are now originals. Um, so the ones that had been fitted were made out of a solid piece of like steel, I guess, maybe iron, but anyway, but the issue was it was not hardened steel, whereas these, they have like a hardened steel pin and then they have these like brass caps, so totally different construction. Again, that chap that's been helping me supplied me with those two parts because you just can't can't find them on eBay or anywhere else. So that was amazing. He also supplied me with the bushes. So I had to press out of these rocker arms, the other bushes that were with the other pins, fit the new bushes that he gave me that would suit these. Um, so that got done. That was quite a big job. Quite a lot of, you know, checking it all out. Um, and then what else do we do with that? Uh, not sure. Anyway, um, then I, bought these little clips that go on here and then they hold down the felts which should help um, with oil loss from the top here because my other bike the ktt it has got those yeah but it does there's quite a lot of oil escapes through these open valves which obviously you know again it's just the era they were open valve engines and it's why actually i like these bikes i know it's because it visually looks amazing it's really cool 
but I know that later when they get enclosed valves, there's obviously a better system. But anyway, I liked it like this, open valves. So yeah, so they got fitted. Um, the tappets, I luckily saw some original spec, although they're obviously they're new made. But the club don't supply them and I didn't know anywhere else that supplied them, but I managed to find someone that did. So they got changed because what was fitted was like just a big fat bolt sort of thing, wasn't it? correct? So they got fitted. Um, and I've put a little lock wire, drilled a hole and put a little bit of lock wire through that tap it because I just don't want that nut coming off and you know so yeah so that was done um I can't remember what else I had to do but anyway then mounted the magneto which was overhauled by a company that took over a year to do the job I don't know if they're still in existence but I wouldn't recommend them I would recommend uh another guy Peter to Kramer I think his name is uh Rutland Dynamos I think his name is company wise but he seems very good uh, so yeah, anyway, so I mounted that, but I had to pack it up, and I've used um, coke can metal, which is probably a completely wrong thing to do, but anyway, because it's so thin, I think it's about half a foul maybe, I don't know. So yeah, I've just layered them up and uh, stacked it till I'm happy with the chain tension on the other side. Um, I've done the valve timing, so I had a degree wheel on here. Um, it's not got the figures that it's supposed to have. Uh, but it's, I think it's opening, I think it was 20 foul, whatever it was, it was like, it was 20 degrees consistent off of where it should be as such. So if it was opening 20 degrees earlier, you know, whatever. So we decided to just leave it and go with it because the cams have possibly been reground or whatever. But if I, if I change the position of the bevel gears, it was then wildly out. So it was like, we just live with that. And whenever I get to run it, we'll find out. Um, so yeah, then I did the ignition timing. So the ignition timing and the valve timing have been done on this. So hopefully that's good to go. Uh, in behind this engine shock absorber, I had to fit a friction um, disc. So there was, the previous one was actually, it was actually this. So it was just a piece of brass. Um, it's not quite right, so I don't know if that was going to work or not, but I just decided to get rid of that. Um, actually, that's another point. So between these two, on the old barrel, there was this, this um, copper gasket that was sat, I think it was sat uh, within within the head and the spigot was like onto that, which there's, there's not meant to be one. So the gap, the, the joint between the head and the barrel is supposed to be a lapped in joint, no gasket. So I did the lapping in, but I had a huge gap between the two flat surfaces, not, not the spigot, but the bit below. And so I've made um, a copper kind of gasket, but it's more just almost to support that big open space, because I've heard that the early engines were designed like that, and that's how it's meant to be. But the later engines, they changed. So that, that gap between, so you when you ground them in, it was like coarse paste for the spigot, or was it way around? No, sorry. Fine paste for the spigot, <laughs> coarse paste for the flanges. Um, but like I say, because I had a huge gap, I've made tanks go in there. So again, we'll see if that causes me problems or not. Um, I've mounted the carburetor. This carburetor was sourced correct for the bike. Amac uh, 15 MDY from Germany. This was this one was done for an NSU bike. I don't know, you know what the difference will be, but you can see on this top part of the float bar actually says Nuremberg, like Nuremberg ring, I presume, like that kind of place. Um, but anyway, but, but it is an original carb, uh, so that's all good. That's been mounted, but I'll have to make a line. The gearbox I overhauled um, actually quite a lot longer ago, because most of this work's happened within the last two or three months, but this one I overhauled ages ago. Um, Doesn't sound too bad. I've replaced all the bearings basically. Um, I made a mistake with the original gearbox. This is this is another one I've sourced. Whereby I didn't realise this bearing inside here needs to be driven outwards, but I was driving it inwards because I didn't want to remove this free um, nut thing. It's got free like things on it, which you know if you drift them around it, it distorts and changes stuff so anyway i've now made a tool that will undo and tighten that up but um yeah anyway so i made a mistake because there's a there's like a washer in here um 
which is really thin and it's to stop oil coming out but I kind of didn't know that 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 all removes from that way and then on the inside it looked like it was it just I don't know I didn't get it I don't know but it just looked like it should come out if it didn't so I've damaged the original gearbox um it is probably salvageable but anyway and then I also didn't know on the other side of that there's like a left hand thread thing which I didn't know that as well so we were tightening that up that then busted a bit of that so yeah so I sourced this one changed all the bearings in it I've got a whole new set of bearings for the other original gearbox should I manage to be able to get it working again fitted the kickstart and the kickstart return spring uh, I've yet to sort out a cable so that's that's generally what's been going on and then with the forks on the girders um, my mate bushed these upper two for me because they were really 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 bad um one of the bottom ones didn't need doing it, and the other one i feel does but he didn't get around to doing it so sadly it's all been reassembled so i'm like i just need to get this bike done now um hopefully that won't be too bad but i can feel it's got a lot of play there yeah and then you know new bearings in the wheels brake linings were done um managed to source taper timkin um roller bearings for the rear but someone had converted those to um, modern bearings. So I don't know what the engineer did, but he did something supposedly to sort out. I think he's just put a very thin piece of metal in there because it's perhaps not quite a good fit. Um, my only concern with that is when I spin the wheel, it seems to rub in one place and then go freer in another place. But that could be the hub. It's not quite, you know, concentric, whatever it's called. So I don't know about that, but anyway. Um, yeah, what else have we done? I made this part here that takes the rear brake um, because the original was just not that pretty. So that's been remanufactured to the drawings and using the other part, I suppose. Uh, can't remember what else, to be honest. Um, but yeah, so the next job I'll be doing is I'll be dealing with, with this part on the uh, on the gearbox, which is through the clutch. And it's the thrust... Um, bearing so i've sourced it from the club i've got these new parts and the next video i'll show you me uh modifying them or i don't even want to call them but fettling them to work because they don't currently currently don't work with the sleeve that i've got the gauge over here so i'm going to show you yeah just me basically honing this out a little bit by hand it's probably not the correct way to do it but it's as you can see i'm not in a professional setup which a lot of the youtube garage things are they've got this amazing like set out workshop with a big bench and loads of nice you know clean work area and i've just got hands and knees and uh yeah <laughs> but at least this is real when hopefully you know some of you that might be in the same position as me you know might be able to realize that you can actually do the work yourself and stuff so anyway we'll be dealing with this like i say so that i can then that'll be my next component to fit and then we'll be fitting the clutch I did try and record videos in the past when I was trying to assemble these forks, but because everything seemed to be going a bit wrong, I just gave up and I was like, this is going to look so ridiculous, I'm not going to bother making the video. Um, however, like I say, now I'm going to try and start doing some episodes of what I've been doing to this and what I've also been doing to the KCT, maintenance wise, mechanical stuff, whatever, um, because I feel that. Uh, I class myself as a younger generation of Velisa owner, I mean, obviously I'm not young, but majority is a lot older than me and the one thing we're all aware of is you know the younger people need to be getting the knowledge and all the rest of it and that's why i've been getting help doing what i'm doing with the engine but um i feel that getting it on youtube will help because like say someone might just happen to buy this same you know thrust washer um from from the owners club and then need to question why is this not working and stuff so yeah so we'll try and go into that in the next video um but yeah, thanks for watching guys. I say this is this is hopefully gonna be a little bit more interactive than my normal riding videos. I've got obviously rides of the KTT and this thing whenever it eventually gets on the road. I mean it's nearly hundred years old, so I'd love to get it on the road before it's a hundred, but I don't know. Like I say I've already wasted seven years trying to get to the stage that I'm at now. And it was actually if you watch my other video, I've got a um, slideshow video of the restoration of this bike. And uh, in that you'll see that when the engineers had it. It was all assembled and it all looked quite nice all the tank was on and all this other stuff and then it went backwards so i had to take the wheels off I had to redo this i had to redo that I had to get new cones made for this this front 
wheel bearings like a cup and cone thing and the original cups had this small area of pitting on both of them in the same place and I was told I thought it'd be like from rust where it was like on the underside but I was told it's not it's like an impact thing so although the bearings are probably rotating because of where the force is it's created this little pitting and um there was a guy on Instagram actually that's got this really cool little picture and it's like he's got one of those cones in the lathe so that's spinning around in the lathe and then he's got a little round ball on like a Dremel type thing that's obviously spinning as well and he's just grinding that shape you know in the hardened steel to yeah to be smooth and uh, nice again but I didn't want to do that because I have no original drawing to cover this part I didn't want to alter the original part because then for future generations there's no reference to how that part should be like correct so I just gave that part to an engineering firm and said can you make me this part in hardened and then they, they did the job which is great I could have upgraded that or modernized it to uh, more modern roller bearings or cage bearings whatever they're called but I wanted to keep it cup and cone just I want to try and keep it like I say as original as I can and um, as correct as I can so even if I have to source I don't know, a replica part somehow, because I can't get an original. I'll try and make it too correct as possible, hence, like, with these tappets and stuff. Um, anyway, cool. Maybe, maybe see you on episode two.